Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses the Islamic practices and duties by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. I'm your host, Mosin Shah, and alongside me, my co host, Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Today's discussion will be on extravagance and squandering. Sheikhna, um, uh, israf and uh, tabdir, extravagance and squandering. What, what is this exactly, and what is it referring to? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. Let's begin with the two verses of the Holy Quran with regard to israf and tabdir. Allah says in Surah Al-Araf, Ayah 31, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكلوا واشربوا ولا تسرفوا إنه لا يحب المسرفين. And eat and drink, but not by extravagance. He does not like who those with extravagance. In the second ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna al-mubadzirina kanu ikhwana shayateen wa kana shaytanu lirabbihi kafura. The squanderers are brothers of, of devils, of shaytan. And the devil is ever and ungrateful to his lord. So, with regard to israf and tabdir, two different meanings, although sometimes they end up in the same root, which is wasteful. And uh, according to the, to the uh, definition of, of some scholars with this regard, they say that spending at the wrong place um, is known to be a squandering. So, let's say you buy something and you never use it. Mm -hmm. Or you just throw it away. Something that you bought, you got some money for example, you throw it away for example. That is known to be squandering and tabdir. You never used it, you never gave, gave it to somebody else who he actually needed that uh, item or that money. And the second definition with regard to uh, Israf, they say that spending more than necessary is extravagance. So again, to spend more than you need, mm -hmm. more than necessary. If I have, for example, one car, I buy a second car for my pleasure. You know, to drive it in the weekend, especially the, those old cars um, with special styles, for example, and color. So to buy something that I don't really need, it's, it's to do with necessity and need, not pleasure and want. So this is how tabdir and israf can be divided and defined. And we have actually, um, with this regard as well, a few um, narrations and a hadith about uh, israf and tabdir. As an example, uh, the commander of the faithful Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says with regard to um, tab, uh, Israf, he says Israf have three qualities. Number one, the person who does Israf, the one who actually does not respect this grace of Allah, this uh, um, bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says number one, he eats more than required. Okay. One of the first extravagance um, signs and you can actually see and define within somebody or some people that that person eats more than he requires. So if I'm, for example, uh, if I can just eat, let's say, two apples, if I eat the third, it's going to be more than required. That's israf. The third apple that I ate is israf. And of course, it's harmful as well for the mm -hmm. stomach. Uh, the second um, sign that he wears more than is suitable for him. Sometimes I wear special clothes for work. And they become dirty because of the work nature. But if I use that clothes, which I bought especially for the weddings and parties and, and so forth, for work, that's israf. Mm. 
Or for example, if I buy 20 suits, and I, don't, I, just, I just need three or four suits and that's it. The excess and the extra suits are all israf. Because I desire, it's, it's like a hobby, a desire that I, I want to have more clothes, mm. um, uh, more food, for example, variety of foods, which I don't really uh, need of them. You know, some people just want to have you know, an open booth of, of, of food, for example, mm. variety of food, although they can actually fulfill themselves with just a bit of uh, required food. So anything goes over the requirements becomes israf. So the second sign, he wears more than is suitable for him and then buys things needlessly. So he buys things that he doesn't need. Again, the example of the suits, for example. He buys 50 suits. He buys four cars, five cars that he doesn't need, actually, just for the pleasure. So they all counted under the title of uh, Israf. So, Sheikh, uh, a more contemporary issue or a modern day masala for this ahkam can we say that using utensils, I mean, here in the West, we use silver uh, for, you know, knives and forks and spoons. Can we use silver and gold for utensils such as this? In overall, using utensils made of uh, pure gold and silver um, to eat and drink with, so cups or plates and so forth, utensils, it is haram and forbidden. So a mu'min should avoid using uh, these types of utensils in any means. What about um, if we are to, let's say, we want to purchase an extra car. We have one car that we use, but I want to upgrade. Maybe it's out of my financial capability at present. But in today's society, we can get loans and things like that. Uh, car companies offer really good deals where you can pay a small amount every month. Uh, until the, the end of the until the end of the payment, um, is this considered israf or is this actually acceptable? It's okay. As I've mentioned, if it's something extra and excess to the need of uh, your own household, so you know sometimes I need two cars, one for the husband, one for the wife, for example, or, or for the uh, young adult who is also uh, in that house. So it depends on the need. If there's a need, why not? But if, it's not, if there's no need, then that also counts as, as uh, israf and uh, we should avoid it. But in anyhow, um, going back to the topic of the utensils, in terms of using gold and silver, um, those who also manufacture and make oh, okay. uh, the um, those utensils and sell them, for them it's haram and forbidden to receive wages and income oh. for making that uh, cup or plate which is made of go pure gold. So even making that and manufacturing is haram as well and forbidden. So uh, getting that wage or money for making that um, utensils also makes those who get that money haram. So if, uh, imagine um, those who get that income and use them for themselves. Sheikh Nau, we see a lot on social media, we see rich, extravagant leaders of countries who spend ridiculous amount of money. They want uh, a motorcycle made out of gold or a car, or they'll spend money on an iPhone case made out of pure gold. Is, is this okay or is this also uh, israf? Again, I've mentioned this. This is something to do with luxury, luxury uh, pleasure, interest, enjoyment, entertainment. It's nothing to do with the need and the requirements. So they're actually committing uh, israf and tabdir. And oh, somehow, wow. of course, they are actually uh, moving towards this, this phase of um, committing, you know, in some cases, sin. Because they're wasting their money. Millions of money went, for, for example, for something that they, they don't really need. We're talking about gold and silver at the moment, but what about something like saffron? I mean, it's very, very expensive to use. We use it a lot in our dishes. Isn't this Israf? No, that's actually uh, in some food we need it. So we use it for some food. It's just, just to give nice scent and smell to the food. That's a different issue. I mean, to buy, you know, for example, some foods are very expensive, but we actually buy it because we need it for certain 
uh, uh, ingredients and, and to make some kind of food. So buying such food, it's not uh, israf unless it goes beyond the need. So, uh, you know, buying too much, using too much, goes beyond the need and then becomes uh, israf and which is, we should avoid it. One could argue that why do you need to purchase expensive food and expensive meat when it's sufficient for you to buy something that's a lot cheaper or the cheapest? Um, where do you draw the line with Israf? You know, sometimes <clears throat> you can get uh, the most delicious food in a reasonable price and even at home, for example, even if you are a uh, prosper person and you have the means of going and buying that expensive food from an expensive uh, restaurant. Um, if you can actually afford that yourself at home or somewhere which is reasonable price, then why not? Sheikh, you were saying about utensils, gold and silver. What if the gold and silver isn't 100% gold and silver? It's not 24 karat gold, it's 12 karat or even smaller. Is that still haram to use? If that utensil was made of, let's say, parsh, partially um, gold and the other part was metal, for example, and mixed together, in a way that if somebody, and you know, a goldsmith, for example, if, if they actually see it, people will see and say, notice that. If, if they say that it's gold, then it's haram to use, of course. Let's say 70, 80% is gold and the rest is metal then of course that's haram to use. But if it's mainly, it, when people see it, they, they would say that it's actually metal. It's a metal plate, for example. It's not a gold, gold plate. In that case, it's halal to use. So it depends on the percentage of uh, the metal or any other material used in making that utensil. So can we say it's on the consensus of the people that is this item considered gold or not? If it's considered gold, as in it's a small amount of uh, a small amount of ratio or if it's gold plated then yeah we do actually see this as a valuable um, metal then yes that this is haram to use but if it's a little bit of gold just for whatever purpose and we don't consider it to be gold we consider it to be a metal then it's okay to use so it's yes of course I mean again it depends on the amount of metal used in that uh, utensil is it more than the gold when it's, when it's actually made, when you look outside uh, at that plate or cup, is it actually uh, a metal cup mm -hmm. or plate or is it golden? So it depends on the view of uh, the, the urf, as they say, or the experts who would actually de 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 define and to see differentiate between a, a metal plate or a golden plate. Ascent, ascent, Sheikhna. Sheikhna, I'm going to be a bit cheeky here and talk about something that we probably see in our community a lot and that's weddings and celebrations can Israf attack us in this situation where we want to spend a lot of money on decorating on um, hiring out nice cars for the, for the event uh, maybe extra things that we don't need maybe they want to like I, I went to one wedding there was a guy carving shapes out of ice and serving fruit um, sometimes they have animals involved, horses. If you go back home where I come from, there's elephants and camels. Um, is this a sraf? Again, it depends. As I've said, uh, if if they were moderate in, in in spending these things, even in weddings, uh, you know, sometimes you need in weddings to spend a bit. Okay, to buy gold, to buy new suits, for, suit for example, um, to hire a place, for example we can actually get a reasonable price to hire a venue and uh, hold the weddings in, in such places instead of going and spending and overspend and t to find somewhere which is very expensive like the five star hotels venue so we try to be moderate we try to be humble we try to uh, follow the, the tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu and his pure family and how they've uh, spent uh, their um, what they had for their weddings, for example. What was the dowry of the Holy uh, Zahra Sallallahu when she was married, and so forth. So we have to look at the history of the holy Imams and the pure family of the Prophet Sallallahu and, and learn from them in overall. 
Sheikh you were discussing um, using gold and silver utensils. What if someone isn't sure that is this actually made out of gold or silver? Can he use it? Can he not use it? Well, in such cases, um, there's no objection in, in using such um, utensils when you're not sure if it's gold or silver, real gold or silver. You know, sometimes you go somewhere and they bring you a cup of water and looks like a golden cup, but you're not sure. In such cases, yes, you can use them um, because you're not sure about them, so you're allowed to use it until you become sure that and certain that it's gold or silver. Sheikhna, um, there's a difference between gold in the material, gold being used to make a utensil, and gold plated, as in that there has been uh, some sort of gold paint put on top of uh, the plate or the, the utensil. Is that also haram to use? Well, the golden plated and silver plated uh, utensils are, are different than the original pure gold and silver plated uh, utensils. So the ones which were painted or polished by gold um, and the original plate or, or, or cup is actually made of metal or anything else or wood, then that can be used. There's no objection about it. What is the ahkam ruling for using animal skin, whether it be from a dog, pig, cow, non-halal non, uh, animal, uh, for utensils and also for jackets, bags, uh, basketballs, uh, other goods. Are we allowed to use these or are we supposed to refrain from them? With regard to using um, the carcass or the corpse of dead animals which were not slaughtered, slaughtered according to halal, halal way, let's say the cow skin and, and the sheep and so forth, as well as the dog and the pig, um, because they are najis, they are impure, we're not allowed to use them for drinking or eating, for example, a cup of uh, tea uh, used for, um, you, made by the skin of a pig, for example, or a meter, for example, a uh, corpse, for example. Um, also to eat with that, um, with that plate or utensils. To eat, drink, do with wudu as well. So a bottle of water made of the pig skin, for example, to do the wudu is najis. You cannot do the wudu. Ghusl, the waj ghusl especially, it will avoid the ghusl. You cannot use um, impure water to do the ghusl and wudu. But with regard to using them other than these things, drinking, eating, uh, wudu and so forth, and ghusl, to use them, for example, as a... Um, materials used in, in the bag, for example, bags, um, uh, shoes, for example, basketball, footballs, all types of the usage outside the, the usage of Food the oneself, mm -hmm. um, then there's no objection. Although it's um, with regard to the, um, the meter, for example, it's better not to use them as okay. a mustaha precaution, but it is allowed to use. so. There's no objection. So it's mustahab to sh refrain from it. You'll get yes. the to stay away from yes, it. Yes, of course. But yes. if you use it, there's no haram in using it. No objection, it. no. You can and still that's use it. Say, Sadiq. Yes. Thank you very much, Sheikh. No, thank you. Thank you very much to all the viewers and joining us on this discussion. Inshallah, you'll join us again on another discussion uh, with myself and Sheikh Maash. And if you have any questions that you'd like to send in in regards to ahkam, please send them in the contact details provided. And inshallah, the Sheikh will be more than happy to answer them for you. Until next time, Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah Wa Barakatuh.